Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my position on these things is, is well known and not a surprise. And I am not going to vote for this this evening. And in fact, if there was a vote that I could cast that would be hell no, that would be what it would be. Um, I do have a number of questions, and I want to make a couple of statements first. Um, you know, first to Mayor Burnaby. Um, you know, we have occasionally ribbed each other friendly about their times when the perceived um, interests of the city and the interests of the school district are in conflict. And I think that we could agree that to the extent that you all think that this is a benefit to the city, that this is certainly one of those times. Secondly, I'd like to thank you for coming here. Um, I appreciate when people who want to get into the revenue stream of the school district um, come and talk to the school board. Because sometimes people do and sometimes people don't. And there are a number of times when city council has you know, just imposed these things on us with you know, just a letter saying, hey, we're going to do it. Um, so I appreciate you coming down here, and I, I think that's the standard that this community ought to expect from everybody. But we, since I've been back on the board, we've only had it twice. And, and Mayor, I hope that um, you and Mr. Smuggler can come back at another time and brief this board on the economic impact of the uh, community reinvestment area that was passed two weeks ago at, at council because that impacts the school district too. And you know, once again, I think we should be briefed on that. So, Mr. Crawford, Hall of Fame Village already has a 30-year tax increment financing package and that affects both this school district and Point Local School District. Um, I was not on the board when that was passed. Had I, I would have voted no on that as well. I've seen some figures in the area of like $9 million that that TIF package is worth. Do you know exactly how much that is worth? I, I don't, and the only reason I don't is if it's based on the amount of construction and infrastructure that you'd be creating. And we're not quite to the level where I have those exact figures that, as I showed you, we're expecting those by September. Uh, but I'm happy to, as we know more definitively what those are, happy to come and have that discussion. You monetized that tip, though, didn't you? Uh, for the for phase one, yes. Okay, so how much was it? Um, I, I have to get the exact number. Is nine million reasonable? I would say it's probably roughly around that number. Yeah, but I don't want to mislead. I, I'm happy to get that specific. So Hall of Fame Village has a tax incentive package in the form of tax increment financing that interrupts a share of about nine million dollars over thirty years to this school district. Okay. So as I look at this. The, the building that we're talking about, the McKinley Grand Hotel, is currently worth about four and a half million dollars. That's what the auditor says it's worth. And it's, it's generating about $117,000 worth of property taxes a year. So, as I do math, um, figuring that if you're going to put $22 million into that building, it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that it might be tax appraised, say, to double that, $9 million. Okay. So, the, the, assuming that there's no change in millage and no change in valuation, just double what it is now, the 75% that you would not be paying that would ordinarily come to the school district over 15 years comes to about $1.3 million. But then I look at your figures, and you are expecting your point, your your return to be that this is 2.7 percent of your rate of return. So you're actually figuring that this tax abatement is worth a heck of a lot more than I think it's worth. 
So how much do you think it's worth? Well, as I said, the, the value of it equates to about 2.7% of the return profile that we need, right? So today we're generating $10 million in a line, roughly, from the investment that we made. So you know, a couple more million dollars. So it's worth about double what I think it's worth, or what, what I think it's worth. So it's worth a couple million dollars over 15 years. So two million. So that comes out to about. Now, I'll make it, you didn't ask this question, but I'll make it 
mission statement and to get it in a state of my opinion. I've seen small downtowns before. I came from a smaller one that, that exists in Camden, Miller, Ohio. If the assets aren't properly maintained in a downtown, downtowns can die. So if this asset, this hotel, which I think is incredibly important to the vibrancy and the fabric of how downtown is made up, goes away, there's an office building right next door. I venture to say, again, in my opinion, they're going to be incredibly challenged to maintain the level of occupancy from an office tenant. If that building doesn't do well, there's a parking building right across the street. If there's nobody in the offices, there's nobody in the hotel, there's nobody parking, it just can create a domino effect. And I've seen it happen in other cities before. So I would just simply say that's the business plan that we have. I think we would invest in it, and certainly nobody's going to finance it unless it's a small business plan. And I, I, I appreciate that. I just, I, you know, I, it, it, it's all interesting and it's all wonderful, and none of it's the business of this school district. We are not hoteliers and we are not hotel investors. And, and this is, uh, you know, to me, this is very disturbing. And, you know, the other thing that, that this, uh, you know, calls to mind is, you know, all the literature that I read about this stuff, and I brought some for my comments before we vote, because um, I nerd on this stuff a little bit, but, um, you know, all the literature out there is, you know, except for the stuff that, that, that's written for developers, you know, that says, hey, this is a good place to go to get financing. But the, but the stuff that's done by the policy institutes is, is pretty clear that, um, that, that most of the time, these projects would go on regardless of whether there's tax abatement or not, that this is just throwing money in investors' pockets. And, you know, certainly, you know, a couple of the other tax abatement packages that the city has, has done, you know, this year, um, you know, lead me to be skeptical. The, you know, for example, the reliable ready mix tax abatement package, and I don't know what that was worth, but it, you know, I just find it hard to believe that reliable ready mix who owns that big patch of land, you know, when it comes time to to uh, in, invest there, would you know, would pick up their operation and, and leave the city if, if if it weren't for for this tax abatement that's taking the money out of the Kansas City School District. Same thing with with the Slesnick recycling. I mean, this is a decades-old company had a fire. They own the land, and all of a sudden, it's an emergency that they need tax abatement. You know, or they're just going to pick up and leave. So I'm, 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 I'm always skeptical when I hear people who are, you know, really looking to interrupt our revenue stream, <clears throat> come up with, you know, come up with these, you know, with, with these justifications. I mean, if, you know, either. You know, I, I realize that that hotel has never made a dime. You know, it was built in 1981, and the company Gibbons Grable, which is not around anymore, actually went bankrupt building it. They went bankrupt because of the Sohio building. Okay. The concrete package had nothing to do with the new market. Okay. But nonetheless, um, you know, when city council talked about this, Mr. Smuggler talked about the, the numbers of bailouts that the, that the city had given that hotel over the years. I don't know how many that is. You know, and I, I don't keep track, but it just seems to me that if that is not a viable, if that is not a viable operation, it, it, then it's not a viable operation. Why are you know why are you expecting us, this a school district that is not rolling in dough? Why are you expecting us to make a de facto investment in this property that has a business plan that's that weak? Well, I, I do respect. I, I, I don't agree that the business plan is weak. We wouldn't make the investment otherwise. The reality, though, is I think you're saying, you're probably saying the same thing. If you don't believe it's a business that's ever going to make money and go out of business, you're going to lose all the revenue that's coming to the school district regardless. So, in my opinion, this is a chance for you to maintain and actually increase that revenue. And I'll tell you why I think it's different this time than the last time. 
and I'm not a, I can't speak for the future, but all I can tell you is based on my experience, if you can, we can connect successfully what's going on in the village, even today, with the programming we have, we could have filled that hotel over in China. We could have put high paying revenue in there. We could have put new programming in there pretty much all season long. And we can continue as we build programming in the stadium, meetings, conventions, other things using this asset. I don't think you had that kind of partnership in the past. And so if it's under one ownership, we have the ability to do that. So why can't the Eastern City School District benefit from that increased use and that increased revenue through the normal channels of increased property tax. Well, I guess the only answer is it won't because we won't make the investment. We can't afford to make the investment. And so therefore, there won't be an asset to benefit from. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but the asset of the maintenance of the tax that's there today, the actual increase of the tax, is our focus. The only other piece to the business plan that I can assure you of is the cost structure of that hotel will go down because we're aligning with the village. So we won't have multiple different GMs and multiple different people doing housekeeping. We'll have a shared services arrangement where the cost will be reduced, therefore adding to the cost. So I fully understand and appreciate the point of view. My, my, the last thing I can say though is I really do believe that if we don't invest in this hotel, hotel that may not have a few students to invest. So who's ultimately going to make the money when you invest in this and it starts showing a profit? Who's going to get the profit? Well, the, the owners and shareholders of the company. How does, how does this purchase impact this merger with a publicly traded company? Um, I, it doesn't impact it at all. It just becomes another asset that we would include in our profit statements and how we file a proxy statement that lists all the revenue streams and the assets of all of those. So a publicly traded company that, that sells stock out on the market actually could cover this $133,000 a year? Uh, if the publicly traded company was up and running, making money, and selling stock potentially today, yeah, but I think we need to remember what I said to the media as well. The, the publicly traded merger is far from done yet. We just announced an agreement in principle. So I always try to be transparent and temper expectations because I don't want people looking at us, you know, two months from now saying, we promised that was going to be done. We, we've made a promise. We've made an uh, agreement in principle that we feel like we bring great benefit to the company and great capital to the company. So, and one thing, I, if I may, I just want to, I just want to stress one thing here. We have, over the last three months, um, had to put substantial money in the existing owner's pocket to have the opportunity to do the due diligence and consider buying the asset. We are on a very short fuse now. We have a limited amount of time to make this final decision. And without this form of economic support, I mean, our decision we, we have about three weeks to understand exactly the final financials and then we have to see why we make decisions required or not. It doesn't mean we would require that three weeks, but we have to make decisions before or not. You know, you said two weeks ago at the city council meeting, and you also alluded to it this evening, that you were going to be looking for, at some point you didn't specify what it was, but you said you were going to be looking for additional municipal support at some point and you're nodding your head yes now so I heard it right both times. How will that impact the school district? Uh, I don't believe it should impact the school district at all because we haven't really discussed what that form is but I, I'm hopeful that we are only coming to you with what we need to understand by today. There's not a so is there any chance that you'll be coming back to us for more later? No, that's not the, uh, that's not, certainly not the goal that we have at all. That's something.